What's up YouTube, Nick Farina here. I've gotten a lot of requests lately to do a lawn care setup. Um, I finally got some time to do it, so that's what we're doing today. So starting with the mower, we've got a uh, 2016 Skag V-Ride 36 with the electric start and the 19 horse Kawasaki on it. Um, so far, this mower has 78.1 hours. I've had it since, I believe, November. Um, really like this mower. I'll end up doing a review eventually, um, but I've been ridiculously busy lately. Um, this is my mo my only mower right now. I used to also have a 21 inch snapper, um, but it's unfortunately I, uh, got a Briggs and Stratton engine on it, so it's uh, <laughs> out of commission. Um, but for the last three months or so, um, I've just been doing it with this, and it's working out fine. Uh, most of my yards are under 10,000 square foot, so it really only takes between uh, 5 and 15 minutes of mowing time per yard with just this 36 inch. Um, eventually I would like to also add a 52, possibly uh, I'll give right stander a try, um, but definitely happy with the V-Ride, um, so could be a 52 inch V-Ride, um, but I won't be buying that until I can absolutely justify it until this is not doing the job anymore. So for the uh, trimmers, I've got the steel FS94R, the two-stroke trimmer they have. Um, I really like how this trimmer performs. Uh, it's got plenty of power for what I do with it, and it's super lightweight. Um, the only problem is uh, in high heat, it can be a real pain in the ass to start when it's hot. But besides that, I've really been happy with this trimmer. Um, I do have the Echo Speed Feed head on it. As soon as I bought it, I uh, threw away that steel head and replaced it with this Echo just because it's a lot nicer to feed the string in and not have to take off the uh, inside part of it every time you have to replace the string. For the uh, edger, I use the KM90R with the curved shaft attachment. Uh, the reason I went with the curved shaft attachment is simply price. At the time that I bought this, I bought the FS94R at the same time and I couldn't afford the straight shaft. Uh, because of the curved shaft, I did have to mount it um, sideways to get it to clear the wall of the trailer. I could have spaced the rack off the trailer with like a 2x4 or something, but um, I just didn't want to do that. So, works fine. Uh, the rack itself is a two-position green touch industries rack. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube reviews on this rack before deciding which one to get. It was between this and the trimmer trap. Um, so far I'm really happy with this. I did put these little shelf hanger supports for the engine head uh, because of the problems that people have had with the shafts breaking at the mounting point. Um, but it's really nice because they don't move around and they're bolted right into the metal studs of the trailer as with everything else that's that I've done. Um, over here I've got the attachments for the KM90R. I've got the articulating hedge trimmer, the pull pruner, and the extension. Those are all mounted on the wall with some PVC pipe. Uh, really efficient when I need to change attachments, everything's right there, everything has a place. Up here I have a Silky Hyatt, it's got a 20, yeah, 20 foot reach, awesome for palm trees, um, tucked up out of the way up there. I also have a trash claw 
for when I'm doing my commercial accounts. Um, I do a couple of gas stations and there's always a ton of trash to pick up. And then on the bottom here I have a little 16 foot aluminum ladder. Uh, you might wonder why I went with such a short ladder. Um, well, I, I do a lot of SRT climbing, so anything over this reach uh, I can still get to with my climbing line. And this is just really light, so if I have like uh, you know more than three or five palm trees to do at one time, um, it's just a lot easier to move it from tree to tree. Uh, it's just held on with a uh, bungee tie to a little rack I made. Um, you'll notice that the floor, it has a garage floor epoxy. It's got the um, flake in it so that the tires don't uh, skid or anything. It's held up really well so far, although it does have these spots. Um, but that would happen with any coating you put down. Um, this is about uh, a year old or so. Um, I also painted the walls white uh, just to make the space look bigger. Um, if you go with like a darker color, uh, the whole trailer will be dark and it'll it'll be hard to see everything. Um, I did run the epoxy up the walls just to give a nice clean look. Taped it off. Um, the mower is held with these little two by twos. Um, I just spaced the tires behind it because um, I forget the YouTuber that mentioned or did this, but uh, you know if the mower slides backwards, it really can't go anywhere, um, and I don't want to have to be crawling out of a hole every time I take the mower out. Um, over here, got the Green Touch hand tool rack. I love this rack. I've got a leaf rake, mulch rake, a um, water main tool, regular shovel, flathead shovel, um, and then in the front I have a, a mattock in the barrel. Um, up here we've got the two uh, steel blowers, my old 600, I've had that for four years now. It is due for some valve adjustments and I took it in twice and had to take it back because they couldn't get to it fast enough um, so I just had to do like a voodoo ritual to get it to start um, so I'm gonna be dropping that off soon to the shop uh, yesterday I picked up a brand new VR 700 uh, because my local well one of my local shops was having a spring sales event I saved about uh, $80 on this blower. Um, just broke it in today. So really looking forward to it. It definitely puts off a lot more volume than the 600. Not to say that the 600 isn't powerful itself. Um, but it'll be nice for the leaf cleanups and everything like that. Um, I didn't mention I also have a Echo PV250. This is one of the only Echo pieces of equipment I have left. Originally, everything I had was Echo, and I had constant problems with them, except for this blower. I've had this for five years. Uh, it still starts up. It runs uh, okay. It sputters for about five minutes that you're running it, whether it's hot, whether it's cold. Um, and then after about five or seven minutes or so, uh, it'll run just fine. So, not sure what that is. I've replaced the carburetor, spark plug, air filter, fuel filter, fuel lines, uh, primer bulb, everything. So, maybe switching to a steel handheld, but I really don't use it that much, so no need to do that at the, at the moment. Up here, uh, I made these two shelves out of uh, two by fours and uh, three-quarter inch plywood. They are a little bit heavier than they need to be, um, but it'll just last that much longer. It does put a lot of extra weight on the tongue of the trailer, um, but it's it's not, not a problem. So you can see I just screwed a cut-off section of 2x4 directly into the metal studs, 
and I have one of those there, one on each side, over by the door, and then I have one that's running all the way to the floor. Um, I did make them quite deep, so they come out all the way to the door, um, so that I could just fit you know, a whole bunch of crap on them. I just picked up this Shindawa HT-235 40-inch single-sided hedge trimmer. Really, really liking this hedge trimmer so far. Um, for a while I was using a Echo, I think it's like a HC-150, it's a double-sided, like 22-inch. And, of course, my uh, articulating combi head. Um, but for long hedges, like at my commercial properties, uh, this does the job so much faster and it takes off all the clippings with the sleep rake. Uh, so I don't have to uh, go back over it and pick out the clippings. And it doesn't leave like dead ones behind. Um, I've got my oils, WD-40. Uh, for the hedge trimmers, I use this uh, hedge trimmer cleaner resin remover. Um, it gets off all of the resin and uh, like sap from the trees, especially when you're trimming like uh, ficus. Um, I've got barn chain oil for my chainsaws. Two and a half gallon uh, steel synthetic mix. Uh, my mechanic told me that the four mix steels uh, get fouled up by the non-synthetic oil, so I switched to that a few years ago, haven't had any problems. Uh, and then I just have some extra 10W30 motor oil, although you're not supposed to use that in the Kawasaki commercial engines. Um, you're supposed to use that uh, zinc oil that they sell. At least that's what my mechanic told me. Um, here I've got my brand new climbing rope. It is New England, uh, what do you call it? I forget. But 150 feet of half inch uh, 24 strand climbing rope. Um, got a tarp, just in case I need one. Haven't needed it yet. I bought that like a month ago uh, because I had two other tarps that I used and they disintegrated. Um, Got the cordage to uh, support new trees along with the stakes. I was supposed to do a tree, in a small tree install the other day and it didn't happen, so I still have to take that out of the trailer. This is my random bucket. I've got a extra blade for my silky saw, gloves, ratchet straps, extra chains for the chainsaws, um, tire inflator. Yeah, a bunch of random stuff. Eye protection, ear protection. Uh, I forgot I also have some uh, extra chains for my little MS-170. I burn through these things pretty quickly. Probably go through a chain every two weeks. Um, on this side, I've got all my little tools. Just stuff that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. I have extra edger blades, uh, deep socket, uh, sockets, box blade, hammer, uh, hand pruners, ratchet, um, there's a little dog for the 170, uh, still need to put that on, or no actually I did, okay, so uh, two scrunches, one has the Torx T27 head on it, the other one is a flat head, um, and also different sizes. Uh, this one I got with my MS-150. It does take a different size wrench than the standard. Got a cheap Baco uh, handsaw. I let my helper, or give that to my helper to use when I'm doing tree removals or pruning. Down here, we've got a Arctic cooler. Uh, I always keep it filled up with plenty of water. I actually don't really add ice to it, I just keep it full of water and it stays mildly 
uh, cool. Uh, got a two and a half gallon can for my mix, and then a five gallon uh, shirt, or what do you call it, no spill can for my straight gas. Then I've got a brute can. I've got two of these. Um, there's the Matic I was talking about at the beginning. Up top, we have a steel MS-170. Uh, by far the saw that I use the most, even though it's the cheapest. I love this little saw. I've added some metal dogs to it. And I did a horrible job um, up modding the muffler. But it works really good. It's just, you know, it looks really rough. Just so you see how much I've used this. Here is the old bar. I've had this off for about three years now. Uh, runs just as good as the day I bought it. Um, it doesn't get gummed up through palm trees. And because of the really fine uh, chain, uh, being that it's a much smaller tooth than a standard chainsaw chain, um, it just cuts a lot easier through the soft stuff. Um, got an MS-250. Um, bought this for the Hurricane Matthew. Never got any storm down here. But I've used it quite a bit. Um, for a while, it actually is my main felling saw and uh, cutting saw for those bigger trees. Um, I've recently upgraded. I'll show you that in a minute because it's not in the trailer. Up here, I have one of my new saws, my MS-150 TC top handle. This is my favorite saw at the moment, um, just because of how light it is. It's only got the 12 inch bar, and the chain is even finer than on the 170. Um, it's perfect for palm tree tr uh, trimming, but not for uh, removals, because um, it has the clutch on the outside of the bar, so it gets easily clogged when going through soft material. But through the hard stuff, um, has no problem. I also did a muffler mod on this, but I did a much cleaner job. Um, I kept the cap on it, whereas I just completely removed it from the 170. Um, but I did enlarge the opening and took the uh, spark arrestor screen off, as I've done with almost all of my machines, especially on the FS94R. Um, it's a cooler running machine than like a chainsaw, so your spark arrestor easily gets gummed up. And at one point, uh, it wouldn't even start. And as soon as I removed that screen, as I was at like the seventh on of the day, uh, ran fine, started up right away. So. If you're having problems with your FS94R, that might be the issue. Up here, my sprinkler repair stuff. Nothing too crazy, but if I manage to run over a sprinkler head or someone has a small repair to do, uh, I don't have to drive to Home Depot and waste an hour of my time. Um, I've got all the stuff I need to just fix that right away. Um, of course, if it's something more extensive, uh, you know, I don't mind driving the vehicle because uh, making a sufficient amount of money then. But if it's just a $20 sprinkler repair, it's not worth it to um, sacrifice your time. Up here, I've got my climbing equipment. gonna need a second bag pretty soon. Um, really been buying a lot of climbing stuff recently. So I've got my silky Zubot with the uh, leg straps. Um, 
you know, actually I'm going to do a separate video on this, but I've got my climbing spurs, harness, um, everything like that, just in this bag. It's really convenient um, having it all together. Just load it up in the wheelbarrow and uh, along with your saws and your rope to the, uh, to the tree that you're removing or trimming. Um, and that's about it for now. I do plan to insulate the ceiling of this trailer because it gets ridiculously hot in the summertime here down in South Florida. Um, so let's go to the outside. I recently had the trailer uh, vinyled with my new logo. So came out really nice except a kid hit me while I was at a red light a few days ago. Really pissed off about that. Got it all done on three sides. Came out really nice. The trailer itself is a 2015 Freedom 6x12 V-Nose in the Dove Gray color. Um, it has these side vents instead of a roof vent, so there's a outlet here and then an intake on the other side up top. Um, so you always have constant airflow going through the trailer. It has a nice diamond plate uh, up front. Um, I keep my cones right on the jack. Really convenient. When I pull up to a lawn, I just grab the cone, put it where I need it, throw it back on. Um, the truck is a 2004 Ford F-150 FX4 with the 5.4 liter V8. Uh, it's got a leveling kit and some Falcon Wild Peak ATs. Got about 20,000 miles on these tires. They still have fairly decent tread. Um, the sides I made recently, uh, two weeks ago, I had a large tree trimming job and I couldn't use my open trailer um, because it was in a trailer park and I didn't want my tools uh, walking away. Um, filled up with some debris right now. I need to go dump that tomorrow morning because I've got a tree job on Tuesday. Um, it's got this, well, I bought this tarp from Harbor Freight. It's a fine mesh tarp. I believe it's a 6x10 measurement on that. Um, I have the front, I just have it screwed in on each side, and then it comes over down to about here on each side, all the way down, and then I just use two uh, bungee cords to keep it down, and it covers the entire thing, so I don't have to worry about uh, debris flying out and hitting a car or something like that. here I always keep a measuring wheel for if I someone comes up to me and they want like a sod job or sod installation or mulch anything like that I can do the estimate on the spot I don't have to come back another time I uh, got a hard hat and a vest for the dump that I go to when I have uh, construction waste um, I use a towel as a seat cover and then if you're at a job and you're gonna you know you're gonna be there for a while it's nice to have one of these sunshades for your window so you don't have to be in 100 deg degree heat and then come back to a 110 degree truck when you're done and that's pretty much it for the setup Here I've got my shed. I have a small wood chipper, Janssen GTS 1500. I picked this wood chipper because it has a big enough opening for palm tree branches. 
versus like the DR or something like that. Um, that opening is about 12 by 6. Uh, it won't take a 6 inch hardwood branch, but it will take uh, softer wood, pulp like a palm tree. Um, the chute rotates whichever way you like. The engine I was kind of on the fence about because it's a Jang Dong, but it is a true Honda clone and it's electric start. So far, uh, it's performed just as well as a real Honda, um, but time will tell. Got a steel Jackson wheelbarrow. Um, I don't use the plastic ones, I've had bad luck with those. Uh, this is the snapper mower that's been out of commission. So the engine's seized, needs a new engine. It's only got 79.35 hours on it. I put that uh, tiny tack on there as soon as I got it. In the shed, I keep uh, my fertilizer. Um, palm trees I use uh, the Lesco high manganese combo uh, seems to have immediate results it is a liquid fertilizer um, got some standard 10 10 10 and then uh, actually this is fungicide um, all random tools got a Harbor Freight air reel that I haven't hooked up yet a uh, bunch of edge blades I accidentally misplaced this box, so I ordered another one. So I've got edger blades for life. Uh, mower blades. Got a cutoff saw blade from uh, another job. Uh, parts. Got this nice parts uh, bin for all the uh, air filters and fuel filters and whatnot. Um, this is the sander that I sharpen my blades with, just a uh, 1x30 uh, belt sander. Um, definitely less efficient than a uh, lawnmower uh, blade sharpener, but it's also a lot cheaper. It was like $35, $40 at Harbor Freight. Um, eventually I will upgrade to uh, one of those lawnmower blade sharpeners because I really hate doing this. Um, Again, Harbor Freight is kind of the theme here. Uh, got their uh, Harbor Freight toolbox with their little welder. Um, definitely not the best welder. Um, in fact, probably the worst. But it gets the job done. It's not clean, um, but the welds are strong when you're welding really thin metal. Um, and just all random stuff. Uh, Got the air gun for when I'm changing my blades. Um, this is the compressor I use. It's another Harbor Freight tool. Um, originally I bought this one for changing my blades and then realized it wasn't enough uh, CFM to power my air gun. So it sucks to buy the tool you need twice, but live and learn. Um, still have some of my Echo tools. I have this uh, PE-225. It runs. Um, has had some problems. I did replace the carburetor and everything else. Uh, spark plug, air filter, fuel filter, fuel lines. Um, here's my the HC-150 I was talking about in the beginning. Um, just sharpen the blades. I am selling both of these tools as I don't use them now. Um, so if anyone wants one uh, and is in the South Florida area, just let me know. I'll give you a price. I've got my uh, Brindley spreader. I'm uh, not really happy with this spreader. Um, there's no like measurement to measure how much fertilizer you're putting out at one time, so you kind of have to guesstimate. Um, they have this, but it, it really doesn't work. Um,
that's about it actually. Got a uh, sprinkler um, donut cutter, tamper, some other small hand tools, um, and we insulated the ceiling because it was getting way too hot in the summertime here. Um, here's the counterweights from the Skag. I took those off as soon as I got it because I only weigh 130 pounds. So, totally unnecessary for me. It puts excess strain on the hydraulics. Um, and also, when changing my blades, I'm able to lift the front up by hand uh, rather than having to use a jack. I just throw it on one of these jacks, uh, track stands. Over here, I've got my Hasegawa Arborist Ladder. Um, it is a 12 foot, but it actually is 14 feet in total length. I don't have a rack for it yet for the trailer, but I will be getting a roof rack to hold this and a taller um, extension ladder. Uh, it's just not something I've been using recently, so I'm holding that off. I do need some uh, rigging equipment for a job I've got coming up. Moving a 60 foot eucalyptus tree. Um, I have a compost pile. Eventually, going to make a tiny little nursery back here and grow some uh, Green Island ficus and some other plants. Um, here's my wood pile. So, all of the good wood that I cut, I have been saving it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it yet but it's drying out for now. Eventually it'll be firewood for someone. Rather than paying the dump to take it, uh, I figure this is a better alternative. And that wraps it up. If you have any questions about my setup, um, please leave them in the comments section. I will do my best to answer them. Um, if you want to see more videos from me, uh, give this video a like. Um, mostly it will be tree climbing uh, GoPro footage, um, but I will get some more uh, lawn care videos up. I only do this uh, about three days a week and then the rest of the time is uh, tree trimming. Um, it's just a nice form of steady income when I'm uh, bidding on tree jobs. The last thing I wanted to show you is my brand new steel MS-362 CM. This has the new Mtronic self-adjusting carburetor system, so no adjusting needed. Um, haven't been able to use this uh, saw on a job yet. Uh, so far it's just been uh, breaking it in and uh, testing it on some of the wood in the back. I do plan to buy a uh, aftermarket exhaust for it. Um, the exhaust is definitely uh, super restricted. I could just open this one up, but there's a company out there that makes a really nice one for this. Um, and I have also ordered a 20, 28 inch Suki Gara lightweight bar for this. Um, I'm not sure if this saw is powerful enough for a full uh, standard chain. I may have to get a skip chain. If any of you know um, anything about that, please leave that in the comments section. That concludes my 2017 lawn care setup. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a tree climbing equipment setup uh, pretty soon whenever I get some extra time. Um, if this video was helpful to you in any way, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, like this video 
and uh, comment if you have any questions. Thank you.